Welcome to Boulevard 40, home of the Bible Reading Party and also the BibleInOneYear.com, which is an online resource to encourage everyone to read the Bible. It is week 41 of reading the Bible every day. Today's uh, scheduled reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapters 52 through 54, according to my study guide and the study guide that I use is The Woman's Guide to Reading the Bible in a Year by author Diane Stortz. I'm reading from the New Believer's Bible, compact version, New Living Translation. If you want to hear the Bible read to you daily, subscribe to Boulevard 40, turn on your notifications, and you should be alerted each time a new video is released. This week, I will be reading and completing the book of Isaiah, and then I will be finishing up with uh, the book of Peter in the New Testament. And I would like to read the introduction to week 41's reading from Diane Storch's book. The theme for this week is called Stand Firm, Stand Firm. So the first portion here I'm going to be reading um, covers Isaiah, and then the final portion that I'm going to be reading is for the book of Peter. Beginning at the end of chapter 52 and throughout chapter 53, Isaiah provides another look at the servant to come, Jesus. This time as the suffering servant who takes on the punishment for the sins of all the people. Chapter 61 contains the verses that Jesus read aloud in the synagogue of Nazareth when he began his three-year public ministry. In chapters 40 through 55, Isaiah's prophecies address those who would be exiled and feel forgotten. The final 10 chapters focus on encouraging the Jews who returned to Judah after the exile. A Messiah was coming and the Gentiles would join the Jews to serve God in a new nation. Despite this hope, the book ends with a final warning about judgment. And this section here is about the New Testament that I will be jumping into on Saturday. The Apostle Peter wrote his letters to the early Christians scattered throughout Asia Minor, now Turkey, sometime between the years AD 62 and 67, which led up to his own martyr's death. These believers faced persecution within their communities, and Peter wrote to help them understand, accept, and stay firm through their suffering based on Jesus' own example, and to warn, against, warn them against false teachings. And now, Isaiah chapter 52. Deliverance for Jerusalem. Wake up! Wake up, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength, put on your beautiful clothes, O holy city of Jerusalem, for unclean and godless people will enter your gates no longer. Rise from the dust, O Jerusalem, sit in a place of honor, remove the chains of slavery from your neck, O captive daughters of Zion, for this is what the Lord says, when I sold you into exile, I received no payment. Now. I can redeem you without having to pay for you. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Long ago, my people chose to live in Egypt. Now they are oppressed by Assyria. What is this? asked the Lord. Why are my people enslaved again? Those who rule them shout in exultation. My name is blasphemed all day long. But I will reveal my name to my people and they will come to know its power. Then at last they will recognize that I am the one who speaks to them. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news, the good news of peace and salvation, the news that the God of Israel reigns. The watchmen shout and sing with joy for before their very eyes, they see the Lord returning to Jerusalem. Let the ruins of Jerusalem break into joyful song, for the Lord has com comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. 
The Lord has demonstrated his holy power before the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will see the victory of our God. Get out, get out and leave your captivity where everything you te touch is unclean. Get out of there and purify yourselves, you who carry home the sacred objects of the Lord. You will not leave in a hurry, running for your lives, for the Lord will go ahead of you. Yes, the God of Israel will protect you from behind. See, my servant will prosper. He will be highly exalted. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence. For they will see what they had not been told. They will understand what they had not heard about. Chapter 53 Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence, like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried it was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth unjustly condemned he was led away no one cared that he died without descendants that his life was cut short in midstream but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people he had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone but he was buried like a criminal he was put in a rich man's grave but it was the lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet, when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that he is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Chapter 54 Future Glory for Jerusalem Sing, O childless woman, you who have never given birth. Break into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord.
Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid, there is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief as though you were a young wife abandoned by her husband, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandon you, but with great compassion, I will take you back. In a burst of anger, I turned my face away for a little while. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, storm-battered city, troubled and desolate, I will rebuild you with precious jewels and make your foundation from lapis lazuli. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies, your gates of shining gems, and your walls of precious stones. I will teach all your children, and they will enjoy great peace. You will be secure under a government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace, and terror will not come near. If any nation comes to fight you, it is not because I sent them. Whoever attacks you will go down in defeat. I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. This concludes today's reading. If you enjoyed it, please leave it a thumbs up, which will help it to become discoverable and found by others. I invite you to visit the website year. Dot com that's the number one for helpful resources to encourage everyone to read the Bible you can find the links to that website and the Bible that I'm reading from the Bible study guide that I'm using and other cool Bible related channels in the description below I look forward to responding to your feedback and questions in the comment section and I thank you for taking time to listen to the Bible See you in the next video.